Master Teacher Holly Holland back with you for another short sequence today. This one is great for osteoporosis, but it's also good for anyone who just wants to do some good Pilates work that's going to strengthen your core, strengthen your bones. I've got a foam roller. They're easy to get. I love the ones that are four inch soft foam rollers from OPTP, uh, but you can use pretty much anything you have. I love it as a prop, but also because it's really good and therapeutic in a lot of ways. We're going to start out in a kneeling position. So I've got a yoga mat crisscrossing here. A Pilates mat would work just as well. And um, I'm going to come into a kneeling position. So one of the things we really want to focus on in all of our work is how to hold a neutral spine. And that means that you're not arching your low back and you're not rounding it, but just that you're right in the center, we call it kind of my little sweet spot here. Um, so you want to think about your glutes lengthening and your abdominals drawing up and in, snuggling your ribs back so that everything is nicely aligned. I'm going to start out with some nice shoulder openers. So we're going to bring the arms in front here and you can just bring it in and out and start to feel the way you're stretching the arms and then trying to plug them back into your scapular muscles. A lot of times we move as if our arms are part of our necks and they're really not. They really should draw into your shoulder blades more. So we're gonna inhale as you lengthen out. Exhale, start to feel like you're lifting and engaging your low abs. And two more times. Good, now I'm gonna bring the arms up here and I'm gonna stop at the place where I feel my neck muscles want to get involved. So some of us may not go very far and that's okay. I'm just gonna reach it up and try to feel that your abdominals are drawing in, your shoulder blades are drawing back and that you're trying not to puff your ribs out. And we'll do that about three more times. I'm gonna be mindful to not lock my elbows. I tend to do that. So just reaching up and stretching. Good, now I'm gonna slip it behind my head. I'm gonna to try to draw those shoulder blades down. This is a nice position when you have some roundness in your upper back or just tightness in your front chest. So many of us spend our days in front of computers. When you have osteoporosis, of course, we want to avoid anything that is in a flexed position. And this can help you work a little bit deeper into the extension mold. Now I'm going to show you, I'm going to turn to the side so you can see that I'm going to bring this into the small of the back as I place my hands on there. That's a wonderful position to safely bring our body into extension without excessively arching your back. So I want you to think about bringing your feet, uh, your hips distance apart and you're going to bring your glutes under. Now that doesn't mean shortening your low back, it means engaging your glutes and then pulling your abs up and in. That kind of safely sets your low back in. I'm just going to feed my fingertips down, draw my abs up and in, and take a nice gentle back bend. So nothing too much, I'm committing my hips forward, pulling my abs up and in, and just really feeling this lovely opening to start my practice. All right, from here, I'm gonna take us down into a prone position, and we're gonna work into extension. Now, just as before, we're gonna really set up neutral spine, but it's a little different when you're in this position. So here, you wanna feel that same idea of glutes engaging and lengthening, and belly drawn up and in, but it feels a little different when you're here. Um, another cue that works for me pretty well is to feel the tops of my thighs pressing down, my belly drawn up, and that keeps my low back safe. I'm going to take my pinkies on here, and I'm not interested in how much up I go, but really thinking about lengthening my spine. Tops of my feet are down, belly draws up and in, and I'm just going to hover off the mat. Here, I'm trying to draw my arm bones into the scapula. It feels like you're sliding a shelf down, but every single time I'm gonna go back to that setup position and make sure that I don't hurt my low back. Many people seize in their back when they get in these positions and they don't like extension. But if you set this up correctly, reset each time, thighs down, abs up, you're gonna get a really lovely sensation of stretch and reversing the curve of your spine. Now you can keep your hands in this position or just press them down, palms down here. And now let's start to work a little bit into the glutes. Now the glute maximus right here 
is one of the most underutilized, though it's one of the biggest muscles in the body. Setup is still the same. And I'm gonna just try to feel like I'm lifting that from my under butt. Again, more long than high here. Pull the abs up and stretch. Now, my head is hovering off just a bit because I want you to be able to see me, but feel free to just rest your forehead down here. You don't have to be up this high. I'm gonna to try to feel that my legs are stretching and you'll feel this right away because most of us, again, don't work that butt much. So notice that I'm not bending my knee. I'm trying to really think about lifting that right at the gluteal fold. Now I could stay with that, pulling the abs up to initiate the movement. I could also alternate that with arms and legs. So it's a little bit like a spinal balance move. Pull the abs up and in, right arm hovers off the foam roller, left leg goes back. Switch, abs initiate. Look how small that movement is. I never wanna go quickly here because there's just too much that I need to stabilize before I mobilize. Now I have a kind of a loose pelvis, they call it, where I'm, you know, it's a little hikey on one side. It's not quite as stable because I'm very mobile. If you're someone like me, and I think a lot of us are, you may need to go even slower. Make sure that you're really settled into that. But don't avoid this work because it's hard. Just set up and do what you can safely. I'm gonna bring myself back in and come into the side. It is allergy season in Louisville, so my nose it always feels like it's running. Now, when I set up on a side position on the foam roller, it's immediate work here because I'm already lifted. I'm gonna bring my upper body long along the back edge of the mat, and I'm gonna hinge from the hips here as I make kind of a banana pose. Now, absolutely, if you're just starting out, you might just wanna rest one arm here, but I wanna challenge you to work a little bit more here. So bring in your hands behind the head and you can just feel right away that there's already energy happening in your core muscles here. Now if you're a little bit more advanced here, you could pull your abs up and in and just hover. Wow, I can feel that so much just like chiseling my waist, pulling my abs up and in. Do a few of those. Again, don't arch your back or anything like that. But if you want to just set this up, you can either bring your hand behind the head or just take your hand here for a little stabilization. Now, we're gonna to try to energize both legs even though one of them is moving. So I'm gonna flex my feet, stack my legs, and I'm gonna bring the top leg up. It's not very high, it's really much to about hip height, I call it, but I feel so much energy in my obliques and in my lats, right, as I'm and in my side glutes here as I'm raising and lowering. Super safe space for osteoporosis and you're feeling so much resistance in the leg that's pressing down onto the floor, in the spine that's pressing against the foam roller and into the leg that's lifting up. Five to eight is great for all of these. You can see that I'm not counting a lot, but if you were more precise, you would be doing that. Now I'm gonna bring the leg up to the height of the hip and I'm gonna circle through that femur bone and let it tap as it goes down. And that way I'm not going too quickly. I'm trying to keep that small deliberate circle and make it more about length than height. You'll hear me say that a lot. And what that means is it's not sloppy. It's not precise. I'm not into this big kick, which uses more momentum than strength. I'm gonna reverse it now. I wanna really feel what the energy is of the movement. What muscles do I want to focus on? In this case, my femur bone is moving into the acetabulum, the hip socket. And that's all I'm doing there is I'm strengthening these muscles. Now I'm gonna bring that leg up to the height of the hip. I'm gonna kick it forward, but notice that it's still a hip hinge. You'll hear me say that a lot in these exercises too, which is that it's not the pelvis. It's the hip where that femur bone attaches to the hip socket there. I'm also working the inner thigh muscles like crazy to try to keep that leg lifted. And I'm really working on the stabilization of my pelvis and spine. It is so much harder than it looks. All right, and then I'm gonna bring the leg back, set it down, take a moment, because that is really, really hard. 
and then I'm going to bring it into what's called a clamshell position. Here I want the heels to line up with my sit bones, energizing through the low abs, and I'm going to squeeze my heels together, which is going to target the piriformis muscle, a deep hip rotator, and bring that up. So remember, I'm over here. I could be balancing with hands behind the head. I could have a little kickstand here. I could be totally on the floor. I don't even have to use this foam roller, but it's really effective if you have it. Now let's add a little bit to that. We'll push out through the heel, draw it back. So it's up, out, together, and down. Up, out, together, and down. Up, out, together and down one more. Feel this reach and the stretch and then the return. And it's so good. You know you work that. Now, here's your reward for doing that. So before we go to the other side, let's get on that same hip that we worked. And we get to massage it on that foam roller. Oh, it's so good. And so you, I always like to think, well, let's have a little dessert after your broccoli, right? So we'll work through that. And even that pressure, that resistance is good for our bones. And it's stretching into the fascia, a lot of the connective tissue there that can cause inflammation and pain if it's not really limber. All right, so let's set ourselves up for the other side. So I'm gonna let, bring that kind of under my rib cage. I'm gonna line my body up along the back of the mat and I'm bringing my legs forward into that hinge. Okay, so remember that abdominal work. You can just do this, really pressing the legs down, hovering the abs off. Trust me when I say that just even getting this half inch or just the activation of this is gonna work your abs so much. These are little ways that you start to understand how the Pilates repertoire in its precision, in its recruitment of the right muscles works so deeply even when it looks like you're not doing anything. It's kind of our secret sauce. All right, now we can stabilize that and let's start to work down here. Remember your options for your hands. You're gonna push up, reach out. I like to think of that I'm extending out through my heel and then up with my hip. Meanwhile, that bottom leg is doing its work as well. And I'm hugging my abs in always. Inhale, release exhale to engage. There's this simultaneous movement of muscles around the body, which is why it's so efficient and effective. And I'll bring it up and here comes those circles. I'm trying to stabilize everything above the hip as I move that leg bone. It's like it's got a small space and it has to kind of carve out its position. And I'll bring one more down. And I'll bring it up, inhale, exhale around. I'm gonna take a little smile on my face to keep myself from thinking about the misery down there. And bring it up and around. Reach, good. Okay, now I'm gonna bring that leg up to the height of the hip. Here's my crease line at the hip, coming forward. Inhale, exhale, drawing back. Notice that I'm going pretty small range here. I could go further, I could, I have the ability to do it, but notice what happens. It causes pelvic instability, so I don't want that. I'm going to keep it in a range that I can control, not where I can move. And that's a real difference, too, in both our work in Pilates and our work in osteoporosis. We want precision, taking it back. Okay, here comes the clamshells. Notice that my heels are in the same line with this, and I can bring my heels up a little bit. That's going to intensify the stretch. But truly, if you just squeeze those heels together, you'll know right where you're working, right in the piriformis. The piriformis is a super important muscle for us to stretch because it lays over the sciatic nerve, one of the longest nerves in the body, and one that people are frequently painful in because we do sit so much. Press up, extend out. Draw back and close. Up, out, together, and down. Two more sets, going up, reach it out, together, and down. Last one, up, out, together, and down. Remember your reward, here it comes, all right? So we're gonna massage that, just sit in a position. Feels really good. And I'm just gonna use my other leg as a brace just kind of stretch through that. It's really quite wonderful. 
Okay, now I'm going to use it too for a little bit of work with my hips and my core. So I'm going to stretch this down and I'm going to find myself in a neutral spine here. Now you could absolutely pillow something behind here, put something under your low back, but I'm going to stay in this neutral spine and I'm going to try to create without an extra prop. I'm going to press it out so that I'm still making this kind of right angle width of my body. I'm going to bring one leg up to tabletop. I like to try to do as many things as possible to create resistance when I'm trying to think about bone building. So my left leg is pressing down on the foam roller. I've got energy into my hips. And my right leg is up to tabletop here. This is going to be a position that we call toe taps. So I'm going to stabilize through the upper body, take an inhale. And as I exhale, hugging my abs in, I'm going to lower that bent leg only as far as I can keep my back from arching. I don't want to push the back down. I'm always drawing my abs in. So notice it's not this. It's not a knee position. It's the femur bone driving from the hip. Inhale, exhale, hugging my abs in and bring it up. I'll do that twice more. Really feeling that work in the deep, low abs. Looks easy, isn't, as so many of these exercises are. Okay, now I'm going to come to the other side, stabilize in my neutral spine, press one foot down, left leg comes to tabletop, and I'm going to use my arms for some reinforcement. Inhale. As I exhale, I'm feeling that hugging in, like I'm zipping up my pants. Inhale, exhale. Push down and reach down. So the push down is coming from the right leg, the left leg is working through my core. I'll do that three more times. Inhale, exhale. Deep low belly and two. Last one is coming up and exhale here. Ha! Oh, feel that so much and it doesn't look like I'm doing much but for sure I am. Now I'm going to take my uh, heels, I'm sorry, the inner arches of my feet together, and I'm just going to open it out. This is just a nice little stretch here, just kind of roll it across your foot. You get a really good hip opener. So when you've worked a set of muscles really well, I like to often take a nice stretch to release the tension. All right, now I'm going to extend my leg all the way out. I'm going to place my left heel in an anchoring position here, again, that steady base there. I'm going to stretch my right leg up and extend it to the sky. All right, so this is called a leg circle. It's a classic Pilates exercise. You're stabilizing your pelvis, but I've just added a little bit more resistance to the leg that's on the floor to increase that bone building. I can flex my foot. I'll feel that a little bit more in the back of the hip. If I point, I'm going to feel a little bit more in the front of my hip. So I might vary that a little bit. Start at the center of the body. Inhale. And as you exhale, tighten your abs and circle. Make the circle one that you can control. Remember, not just as far as you can move, but as far as you can control. We'll do three more. Inhale, exhale, down around and up. Always coming back to that precise movement, never momentum. Good, now I'm gonna bring it up and reverse those circles. I'll try a little wider, see if I can maintain that. Maybe on this one, I'll point, getting that long line. Inhale, exhale, circle it around. And two more times, finding my abs every time before the leg weight possibly goes into my back. And I'm gonna just bend that knee in, hug it in, give myself a little stretch into my IT band and then move to the other side. So right heel is down, stabilize through the pelvis, extend up. Ooh, that's a good stretch to my hamstring. I can feel that. All right, maybe I'll point the toe as I come into the center this time and flex as I go out. Start at the top, inhale, exhale, hugging the abs in, a little faster this time. I don't want that momentum, but the pace is good as long as I can control it. Inhale, exhale around. Last two, I think I might have lost count on this one. And one more, and bring it. Now, this time I'm gonna go away from the center and flex as I come down. And exhale, deep low abs. I'm really struggling to keep my upper body quiet too. This is definitely harder than it looks. Bring it up, 
and exhale around. Good, hug that knee in, and maybe just drive it over, stretching into that IT band, and coming back. Okay, so what should we end with? Well, I'm gonna roll over and roll up to make that really safely. I always want to see if I can give a little bit of resistance to all parts of the body. So let's try a little bit of planking. Okay, options here. I could totally just do this position uh, without a foam roller, but this is gonna intensify it. So maybe I'll start it on forearms here. I'm gonna feel like you're made to fit yourself as you fold your arms into the center and then bring the forearm on about halfway. Now, I want to feel that my arms are really plugging into my scapula so that I'm not winging here. It's a good surface for that. I'll stretch one leg back to see that I can find that steadiness and then bring the other. Oh my goodness, this is so much harder than I thought it was gonna be, so that's good, I need it. Pull the abs up and in. Draw deep into my low belly. And working towards, you know, five to eight to 10 count here. Whatever you can do with good form. You don't feel any stress in your low back, but you're definitely gonna feel that bone building. And I'm gonna come back. Now to give myself a little upper back extension, I'm going to make sure that I'm not rounding in my low back for osteoporosis. I'm going to extend my hips back and I'm just going to drop my chest down and breathe, releasing into the shoulders. And coming all the way back up. Nice short sequence, great for bone building. I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you next time.